Um, just want to read from Proverbs 16 and verse 3. It says, uh, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Um, the, the, the picture that we have is that of uh, you know, unburdening, actually, you know, rolling off our back uh, all the works, all the things that are to be done, everything that we have, um, our responsibilities, commit that to God, roll it off um, our back onto God, or restore it, or uh, sorry, um, to actually place it in his, uh, in his hands. And it says here that your thoughts will be established. Like when we say commit, it's not like we are uh, being passive, or we are shirking our responsibility, but we are actually placing it in his hands. And uh, the second part of that verse, Proverbs 16 and verse 3 says, and your thoughts will be established. Your plans will be established. Your thoughts will be established, made firm, uh, in order for us to actually move to action. Right? That's the idea. So when our thoughts are established, when our thoughts are clear, um, then our actions are, are also sure, and uh, they are they are clear as well. Right, so, um, so let's um, let's just pray on those lines and just thank the Lord for this day and uh, commit everything that we need to do, everything that comes to our minds, even as we say, Lord, you know, this work, this responsibility, this uh, this thing that I need to finish today, I commit it into your hands, I commit it to you, O oh God, and may my thoughts be established. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for, Lord, um, being the ever-present God every day, every moment, Father God. We are so glad that you are in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. And even right now, Lord, we we commit our works to you, Lord. Everything that you've entrusted into our hands, Lord, we, Lord, we place it back in your hands, Father God, and uh, not as a sense of, uh, Lord, absolving ourselves of, our, of all responsibility. But Lord, we place it in your hands, Father God, stating that, dear Elias, Lord, we need the en en empowering, we need the enabling, Father God. And um, even right now, Lord, we place each and every task simple and complex and small and big and, Lord, everything into your mighty hands, Father God. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will, Lord, as your word promises, that you will establish, Lord, our thoughts, Lord, on those lines, God, that you will make firm, oh, Father God, as you have promised. Yes, Master, come establish our thoughts. Um, can we just take some time to, to allow the Lord to do that? Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's take some time to just receive and, and expect and believe that the Lord will just, you know, establish it, make firm. Yes, Lord, let there be a establishing, let there be a strengthening, Lord, of the very thoughts, Lord, at the thought level, Lord, we thank you. Yes, Master, when we execute, when we implement, Lord, and, and do those things that you called us to do, God, let it be with the assurance and confidence, God, that we have placed it at your feet and you're leading us, Lord, in those ways, God. We thank you. Lord, we commit this time um, into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hey, welcome once again. Um, so far, we've been looking at, uh, we've been studying about um, leadership. We've been studying about vision and how vision is so important for a leadership function, for a leadership role, uh, for the leader. Right? Um, clarity in uh, what needs to be done and uh, what, what we are working towards you know, as a team, as an individual. Uh, it's so very important, right? We also looked at the mission statement, which clarifies the, the, the working out of that vision. And we also looked at uh, objectives or goals that we need to have in order to carry out that mission and to, in order to fulfill the bigger picture, the vision, right? So um, today uh, we'll continue to look at that and we're looking at that aspect of um, of planning, right? Uh, I think we kind of started that. So we're gonna look at that, um, what planning is, and um, also um, we're going to look at um, 
um, well, if if uh, uh, there's something called planning, then <clears throat> is it uh, is it you know what's the right way to go about it, and what's the wrong way to go about it, um, avoiding those wrong ways, and so on, right? So we see that planning everyone does, and right? some of us are very meticulous planners, and uh, maybe some of us are very uh, you know uh, maybe not superficial planners, but but all of us plan in some way or the other. Um, um, Maybe it's uh, you know it's it's how we're going to spend our evening, what we're going to do with the family, um, you know what we're going to wear uh, on a particular day. Maybe if it's a special occasion, we do plan. Right? If we're having guests over, right, what to cook and you know how to uh, uh, entertain and all that, we we plan. So so planning is not something uh, f you know something new to us. Um, it's something that we do. Um, but we're just going to take a, a closer look to see how we can implement it. And if we have any, um, you know, any kind of wrong ideas about planning, and hopefully, you know, when we look into the word, we'll see that, yeah, it's it's something that is necessary, like, um, especially when it comes to ministry, when it comes to uh, the organizational side of ministry, right? it is something that is uh, that is not to be avoided. Right. Um, so let's look at that. So we see it's a it's an activity um, which is uh, which involves a, a sequence of steps, detailed steps, and uh, it's it's deciding in advance. So that's the thing, right? It's uh, you decide something in advance, a sequence of steps. This is what uh, we need to do, and simply put, that is planning. We decide in advance, and uh, also how to go about achieving those steps. Right. Proverbs 426, ponder the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. Ponder the path of your feet. So the word ponder means to, to consider, to weigh, you know, to weigh the pros and cons. Ponder the path of your feet. Okay, where are you going to put your next, you know, your next step? Where's your next step on? So ponder the path, path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Now, uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen some rock climbing, you know, and also, you know, in an indoor setting, you have, you know, all these, some of the malls in Bangalore have this uh, rock climbing feature. You know, it's a wall and then uh, wall climbing rather. And it has these footholds. And of course, the climber is safe because he's got a harness and, uh, you know, you're uh, secured by a rope. Uh, but the, the, the rock face can be, almost vertical or sometimes even you know at an incline so when you're climbing up this way it's almost uh, impossible it seems but the fact is this that there are you know there are footholds so when uh, you know very different from how we would normally you know without thinking climb a flight of stairs you know, we'll just we'll just be careful about where we put our legs. we don't want to miss a uh, miss a step and slip uh, but here in this case be very careful uh, where to put that next? Uh, where to put the next um, hold, next grip in your hand, and where to put your next feet, you know, next step. Very, very, uh, because it determines the step after that, whether it's going to be secure, and it determines the step after that. So when you see some rock climbing happening, when you see some, you know, even uh, 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 in the you know, the, some of the highest peaks where it's snow-clad mountains, you know, the, the next foot uh, or the next step where you place your feet are very, very important, right? So uh, this scripture is ponder the path of your feet, right? Uh, not to be, uh, you know, to confidently place, but also to weigh those steps, right? And uh, uh, some of those uh, things, the decisions are very, very significant ones. And uh, so here, uh, the instruction, the exhortation is ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Let your ways be established, which means that uh, the, the path that you're taking, let it be made firm and let it be established. Right? So um, along with that scripture that we read and prayed, Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So here is it, you know, your thought, let your thought be established, let, you know, your at your thought level, at the idea, at the you know, strategy uh, level, let it be established. And here we see, let all your ways be established. So uh, how will that be established when we actually weigh, you know, when we weigh the, 
uh, the pros and cons when we weigh the, the, the decision of what we are going to consider what we are about to do, right? And not impulsively rush in, but to consider. Um, it doesn't have to be a, you know, taking a <laughs> one week to you know think and think, but act actually to consider, right? Uh, depending on well the seriousness of it, depending on the kind of information that we have and so on. Right? So planning actually helps us to maximize, maximize what? Maximize the use of our time, optimum use of our time. We have all of us have twenty four hours in a day. So how do I maximize it? How do I not waste it, but use it well? in order to reach the objectives so that I'm fulfilling the vision, right? It can be our personal lives. It can be, you know, our individual personal lives. And um, uh, this Sunday, we were looking at uh, purposes and plans, purposes, and pursuits, and, um, you know, uh, just kind of breaking it down, how we can do it for various areas of our lives, right? So, you know, if you can actually look at that, um, I mean, listen to that sermon uh, Sunday that is uh, um, 22nd, Right, day before Sunday, uh, very useful uh, yeah, to do that. Right, so it helps us to use maximum, uh, make the most of our time, make the most of our effort. Right? Whenever we want to do something, we put in an effort, and it's a, it's sometimes these activities require a lot of effort, require a lot of resources, like money and material and, and manpower and so on. So um, if we plan it well, then uh, it'll be a good use or you know effective use of time and resources. Uh, even a simple thing like maybe uh, cleaning a church um, premises. You know, uh, well, it can be a simple task like cleaning, which involves dusting, sweeping, swabbing, arranging. Uh, but if there are a group of people doing it, or even if one individual is doing it, um, it's good to plan. Like it's good to plan and say, okay, this is the sequence. For example, you know, you don't want to swab the place before dusting and sweeping. Right? Before you, when you, if you want, you're going to mop the place first, and then you dust. Uh, the furniture or you know dust the ceiling then you're going to get all the dust on the floor again what you've just mopped so there is a you know sequence in which things need to be done and if you have a group of people coming in you know and everybody go heads to mop or everybody heads to think there is a there is a lack of uh, you know uh, there's a there's a waste of time people are distracted people are you know what do I do next and uh, you're there and then thinking about it so it helps to planning is uh, something that you decide in advance. Okay, there are ten people coming, so this is what each person is supposed to do. This is a sequence. So it's a simple activity, right? So it helps us. Uh, it is a useful thing. It's help helps us. So in order to achieve our goals, we must have a plan that has specific objectives. It's not. Uh, it's not a very broad or abstract, or. Uh, you know, it's not a, a big picture like the vision. Vision will be, is to be salt and light right? and a voice. So a plan cannot be, you know, those broad sweeping statements or steps. Right? Uh, a plan cannot be, I want to be a voice today. No, a plan has to be a little more detailed than that. A plan has to be, okay, when I meet this person I or when I text this person, when I email this person, I want to share God's heart for them. That is being a voice of truth, a voice of encouragement, right? So so that's, um, you know, okay, you're looking at maybe a calendar and saying, wait, today is this person's birthday, and I want to be that voice of encouragement. I want to be that prophetic voice today for them, right? So that is a lot more detail, right? And uh, so it has objectives and a timeline. So plan always has steps, objectives. These are things that I need to reach. Um, and uh, it's very clear, much like you know a football game, if, you, if you're thinking of goals, um, you're thinking like, or you're saying like, okay, it, this ball has to be you know, kicked through or headed through that goal post. It has to go through that. So that's as specific as that. And what is the time frame? You know, in the next 45 minutes or the 45 minutes after that, right? The first half or the second half. This is it. So this is only the time frame. We can't do it beyond that 90 minutes, 
right? Unless there is some extension, uh, extra time. So we can't be do beyond that. So a plan is a similar. You know, this is this is it. We need to do it. We need to time box that uh, plan. Then it's effective, right? So problem six, you know, uh, though it's these are these look like very strong words. Uh, there's a lot of value in it. Now it says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Sluggard means someone who's lazy, uh, complacent, lazy and complacent. So consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So we see that the ant prepares for the future. The ant is preparing to provide for itself. Um, and so it's gathering in the summer when there's availability. And uh, so that when the winter comes, or you know, when the environment is not yet not conducive to go around and gather, or when there's nothing around to gather, then you have enough actually to use. So, um, so that's uh, that is planning, preparing for the future. Right. So planning can be short term and long term. It can be long term in the sense it can be uh, you know, for a for n number of years and it can be for maybe four years eight years uh, it can be for within that year maybe a quarterly plan maybe a monthly plan um, and you can break it down even to weekly and daily and so on so it can be long term but also it can be short term right so the question big question you know sometimes in the in the minds of believers. Uh, and well-meaning believers is uh, is this um, is it right to plan you know as a believer is it right to plan isn't how, how are we interfering in what god wants to do in our lives right see we are sincere we want to please the lord and uh, you know is it something of the flesh right if god is directing our paths uh, shouldn't we just listen and just do right is it okay to plan? Right. And uh, one of the scriptures that really bothers or kind of uh, creates some kind of a you know challenge for the area of planning is Matthew chapter six, right? Matthew chapter six, and uh, and the Lord talking about uh, money, talking about need, uh, but He says, you know, in verse twenty-five, we say this, we see this. He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. And before that, he says, no one can serve God and also man and the God of wealth. No, uh, no one can serve wealth or no one can serve, you know, serve, you cannot serve both. So therefore, he says, do not worry about your life. And then he goes on to explain in that same verse, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. So it's talking about the basic necessities of life. Right. So he says, "What? do not worry about it. And then look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. So these are activities which we as human beings do. We are sowing, we are reaping, we are gathering into barns, we are, you know, uh, we are doing all that. Um, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? And then again, so why do you worry about clothing? Right, verse 28. Um, and then verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? After all these things, the Gentiles seek after. Seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, so the Lord in in this uh, message uh, exhortation to the disciples so he's addressing a very serious thing right and he's also giving a distinction uh, between you know the difference between worrying and maybe working for something worrying and planning about something so we can you know sometimes we people use it to mean that okay i don't have to work towards something i don't have to plan towards something um, I can just be. Um, yes, we need to put our faith and trust in because He is the He is the source. The Lord is the source. 
the Lord is our provider. Um, but we need to understand that he provides through uh, a gainful employment. He provides through the working of our hands in order to bless someone. Right. So we see uh, scripture also you know, gives that exhortation. And Paul writes to in the Epistles and he says, um, you know, therefore, let, let him who steal, who stole, steal no longer, but work with his hands what is good, so that he might have enough for himself and to he can help those who are in need. So, um, so you know, this is the this is the complete picture that we see. So the Lord is talking about not worrying, okay, not worrying about tomorrow, not worrying about those legitimate needs. Now, these are legitimate needs: eating, you know, what you will wear, what you will wear, you know. And other other needs that you can think of, just eating, drinking, whatever. these are legitimate needs. And the assurance is this: that your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. And so, like we studied in financial stewardship, but these are legitimate things, and heavenly Father knows. So, do not worry. But there's nothing wrong in planning. There's nothing wrong in working towards it. So we need to know the difference. Now, many times we. When we plan, we worry and plan. Now, maybe that's why you know we kind of go off and say, well, I'm not going to plan at all. So many times we're thinking, okay, we are in that place of it's not a joyful planning, it's like a tension-filled planning. You know? It's like, oh, I need to do this. Okay, how do we go about it? And then it's a uh, you know, it's a it's a problem that needs to be sorted, it's a problem that needs to be solved, and it's it's filled with anxiety, and we, you know, maybe uh, you know, there's a short time and then we are doing this and so it's there's no a sense of joy or peace in our planning maybe maybe that's why um, we don't even get into planning because we, every time we think of planning you know we, it's, it's like all this tension and worry and anxiety just hits us right but the thing is it can be a joyful uh, planning it could be with a sense of peace and uh, we can plan right? things like what all these needs we can actually plan like what, what will I eat? You plan and plan with a sense of peace, Re ruling and reigning in our hearts. Plan with you know, the joy of the Lord flooding our hearts, like knowing that He is the provider. Right? Okay. Another scripture is uh, it, what, what we see in James chapter four, uh, verses thirteen to seventeen. James gives this. It's like a strong rebuke, and he says, uh, you know, come now, who you say to. Uh, James 4, 13 to 17. Come now, who you, uh, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you know, do, do not know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? Is it not even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away? Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, you know, we will do this. If the Lord wills, then uh, we will live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. Right? So you boast in your arrogance. So uh, what is James really talking about? He's saying, you know, you submit one to God, your life. Your everything that you want to do in the future, right? If you want to go here, go there tomorrow, and buy and sell and be in that city, and you feel that okay, God has graced you in that. You, you know, we we take time to submit that, right, and be led by God in, into all this. He's not against this, right? So we uh, submit. And we also depend, rely on his abilities more than ours. Now, not in uh, uh, you know our, our strength, our our faith, not in the arm of flesh. Right? But God is going to you know you are the one who's going to be doing it. But the Lord is going to empower. The Lord is going to give ideas. The Lord is going to lead lead us. Like uh, again, drawing from what we have been learning in financial stewardship, it is He who gives us. The power to get wealth or the ability, right? So this, since this is in the context of business and you know maybe entrepreneurship, 
uh, buying and selling. Um, so, so God is not against it, right? But He is definitely against pride and boasting. Right? So, verse sixteen. Now, you boast in your arrogance. Because maybe everything is going fine. Maybe you know there's uh, uh, there's you have some uh, ability and skill and everything's fine. And so the rebuke is this: Don't do it with arrogance. Just because you have resources, just because you have skills, just because you have people, don't do it in arrogance. We will do this. We will expand. Don't do it. Do it with dependence on God. Do it with in other in, in other in, a, in, a, in, a, in other words. Do it with humility, not with arrogance. Do it with uh, humility, not with boasting and not being boastful and being prideful, right? because that is evil. Okay, so. Um, so that's the that's the thing when it comes to the scripture James four because these are normally the common scriptures which come to our mind or maybe people preach from to say you know refrain from doing it altogether but that's not the case right okay then the other well uh, school of thought is that anyway the Lord's going to return right the return of the Lord is imminent well. So, what's the use? What's the point in me planning and goals and pursuing? And uh, because the Lord is is running soon anyway, and then all these activities and everything, which are of you know maybe you're thinking about work and you know these are of not eternal value. You know we come to that conclusion. The Lord will anyway return. So, but the thing is this: that till He returns, till He comes back to take us well the lord has a purpose for us in how we live our lives the lord has a plan he you know through the routine through the mundane he has a plan for us plan for sowing plan for reaping plan for watering right talking about you know his field his people and god wants you to use each and every one of us as his disciples to do that and it can be as a homemaker, you're doing sowing, watering, reaping. It can be as a as a person who's in the corporate sector to sow and water and reap. And you can be in the in the ministry in the church environment to sow, water, reap. Right. And similarly, different realms that God can use till He returns. So there, for each of those things, for each of the um, things that we need to do, and also the routine work that we need to do. There is the requirement to plan. So, the turn of the Lord is imminent. The turn of the Lord is sure. He is as sure as the first coming of the Lord Jesus. In the fullness of time, He came. The return is also, in the fullness of time, He will return. No doubt about it. But till that time, He has placed us here with a purpose to sow to water to reap right and we are co-workers with god so we cannot be passive and just float around but uh, we need to you know, utilize whatever he puts in hand so that requires planning once again so um so the thing is that it is not a unspiritual activity it is not something that is uh, a work of the flesh though it can be right so we see that it is a you know a characteristic of God, an attribute of God. He is a God of plan. He is a God of purpose. Now let's consider a couple of scriptures. In Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 28 and 29 says, Now we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Right? Who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay. So you see this, you know, who are called according to his purpose. And it talks about how whom he foreknew, he also predestined that, okay, those who come will be come to know him, come to receive him, will be conformed to the uh, image of his son. 
and uh, they are going to be born again. They're going to have a born again spirit and all that. They're going to be conformed to the image of his son. Right. So this is something that was his purpose or something that he has planned. So we see that right? in Ephesians chapter one, verses nine and nine to twelve. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Okay, so this good pleasure that uh, okay, I need to make known the mystery of the will in this dispensation. Uh, I want to make known to my sons and daughters. So according to his good pleasure, that was his good pleasure, right? which he purposed in himself, which means that he thought through, thought about it, and he planned it out. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him. Right? Being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in God should be to the praise of his glory. So even in you know, in this verse, only in these verses, which talks about how predestined to be conformed, those who come to Christ, and then his purpose, his plan is that all things that are in heaven and on earth to be gathered together in one in Christ. Right? So we see this. Uh, the counsel of the Lord, Psalm 33, verse 11, stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. So there is the counsel of the Lord. There is the plan of his heart to all generations. So it's at the macro level, maybe for the body of Christ, for the nation, and also at a very individual, personal level. Right? So this God, uh, who knows the end from the beginning? He wants us to, you know, follow in His footsteps and be conformed to His image. And this is just like we see. Okay, He's holy. He's loving. He's compassionate. He is all, you know, He's powerful and and so on. And He wants His children to be in the same way. This in the same way we see that this is also an attribute of God. This attribute of this planning and purpose. Right? So we don't have to look down. We don't have to. Uh, we can actually embrace that and say, "Okay, see the uh, value in it." Right? Okay. Um, let's look at some guidelines. Okay. Now, this is this is what makes a difference. And right? this is what makes a difference between, um, well, a, a spirit-led planning or a God-led planning and uh, a fleshly planning. Right. A selfish plan or a fleshly plan. This is what makes a difference. So, um, if we do it right, if we want to do it right, having now considered all this, the fact that God is not against people planning, okay, but we need to know how to plan. We need to know how to do it right. Right. So the first thing is this: that in all our ways, in all our planning, in the pondering of our path, and whatever uh, decisions that we're going to make. Let God in. Let God in. Do not, uh, you know, shut God out. Let God in. Right? And when He steps in, this He brings with Him everything, and He brings with Him, first of all, the joy and peace, and the hope and comfort. He brings with Him the wisdom. He brings with Him the the infinite possibilities right, that we can actually lean on. And uh, use, right? lean on, and draw from in our day to day and in our long term. So, in all your ways, acknowledge it. Proverbs 3, this is 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Well, this understanding, experience, uh, uh, our intellectual capability, He gave us. But we are finite. And there's a limit to it. And uh, so lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, in the sense, whatever way you're considering. right? It could be a step. It could be a path. Step, short term. 
path long term right in all your ways acknowledge him recognize and acknowledge right uh, recognize uh, to acknowledge is to you know if you, if you in simple terms if you're looking at it if you notice someone whom who's familiar you recognize that person you acknowledge and the person looks at you you look and say hello how are you and uh, maybe you don't have time you just wave you acknowledge right so in practical ways how do we acknowledge him because he's going to direct our parts the promise is that he shall direct our parts so if so the question is have we been acknowledging have we been trusting him with all our heart right so that's a biblical way to receive direction trusting in him with all our heart not in our own finite understanding now it could vary we could be a people we could be a person of much experience much learning right a lot of knowledge um, that we have accumulated but the exhortation is don't lean on just that don't lean on your own understanding you know, it, it's limited compared to the infinite unlimitedness of god so don't lean just on that in all your ways acknowledge god okay you know, whatever way you're considering acknowledge god and he shall direct your paths so this is a promise that we have so we are how do we acknowledge him we obey his word so you know, if you're considering a certain set of action certain path certain steps okay is it is it something that conforms to his word conforms to his ways come up conforms to his liking will he be glorified or is he going to be dishonored if i take this right um and also is it in line with okay the uh, is does it help in his kingdom in any way no now certain things no not all things can you know we can equate it to okay is expanding the kingdom of god right it can be a simple thing like okay going somewhere place you know for a rest and refreshing you know um so you know we can't directly equate it to that but you know we can consider all this you know is it morally wrong is it scripturally okay we can we can think of that right and uh, we are that's how we acknowledge him in all our ways okay and then second one when it comes to planning you see so these are guidelines we are looking at right guidelines to plan okay and planning of course you know it could be personal life it could be church it could be ministry it could be for you know all these areas that we are looking at um so uh, so we can use these same guidelines so it's not just for a quote unquote spiritual activity you know like maybe uh, an outreach or a prayer meeting and um it's not just that it's it's for every area of our life we can actually use it so um because you know Proverbs 3 5 and 6 is actually talks about everything you know it says all your ways acknowledge it right so uh first one is in all your ways we acknowledge and we practically do that uh, by considering the word and his ways and uh second one is following the leading of the holy spirit follow the leading of the holy spirit because we are we have this privilege to be called the children of god sons and daughters of god okay romans 8:14 we are the sons and daughters of god and it says that as many are led by the spirit of god so for the son and daughter of god the privilege is to be led by god's spirit okay so that's our privilege so it's not uh, something that is a, a very laborious activity it's not like a burden but it's joy and it's a privilege that we have well we have a privilege to be uh, to be uh, led in this manner because Ephesians 2 talks about the fact that we are made alive in Christ our spirit is born again it's alive to Christ and we are able to hear the voice of the shepherd because of this not everybody has this privilege there's a world that's hurting seeking you know uh, and and all forms of spirituality they are longing for that for the authentic but they place the trust in all forms of all kinds of substitutes all counterfeits because there is a longing but we have received that capacity to hear the authentic and the real right so um, authentic and the, and the true so 
we have to be we have the privilege of being led by God. We are designed because we are born again. Our spirit is alive to the things of God, um, and so um, you know we can do that. Proverbs nineteen twenty one says, "There are many plans in a man's heart; nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand." So go with the Lord's counsel. There could be many options that we are considering uh, because of various things, but then we can always lean in and receive the Lord's counsel. So invite the Holy Spirit. Um, third thing to look at is understand the seasons. Now, this is very important for us, right? Because all of us, if you when we look. When you look at us, we, we go through various stages of life. You know, we could be single, we could be married, we could be parents, we could be grandparents, whatever. Uh, and in a similar way, we could be students, right? We could be, you know, maybe go out of that, grow out of that student phase, and maybe you're working. And uh, in in work, if you're working in a company, you could be a, you know, an executive. Um, a junior management, a middle level management, maybe uh, a senior level management, a vice president, and so on. So uh, we are, you know, we could be in different phases, right? In that sense, uh, professionally also, right? There are different seasons. Right? So keep in mind, um, recognize what season we are in, especially when we are planning for ourselves, personal lives. Uh, understand what season. Right. So, what worked in a in a season where we were students um, is not possible, right? When we are planning things, it's not possible when we are maybe young parents, right? When we are young adults, what worked then, when we were you know maybe college students or schools, is we cannot directly transfer that, or we cannot plan in such a way, we need to acknowledge that hey, I'm in a different season of life. Therefore, there's there are certain realities. The, the kind of way I can spend my time, the way I can spend leisure. You know, as a student, well, it seemed like uh, I was in this whole, you know, everything seemed like one eternal thing. Time extends, right? I can do what I want uh, and so on. I can take off when I want. But not so. There are responsibilities, parental, professional, maybe ministry, family. So, so you know there is a, uh, you know there is a pressure on time. Everything you know in terms of um, uh, relationships and everything. There are responsibilities. So understand that season. So understanding that season and planning will really help us to uh, plan effectively. Otherwise, there's again a tension. There is again a pressure. So, uh, Ecclesiastes three one: To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Verse eleven: He has made everything beautiful in its time, and He has put eternity in their hearts. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to end. And praise God! In as New Testament, New Testament believers, we have the Spirit of God living in us, um, and what I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor entered into the heart of man. Um, well, he, the Holy Spirit, reveals these things to us progressively as we walk with him. Right? Um, and again, Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 5, he who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. Because for every matter, there is a time and judgment. Though the misery of man increases greatly, so so we see that yes, there is a time, there is a season. So understand that. Okay, what stage we are in? When we look at church ministry, when we look at uh, you know, that also, you know, it goes through phases. Right? There is a foundation work stage, there is a growth stage, and so on, uh, which you know you learn in uh, you know the church, the local church. Um, so. Um, so we see that, yes, understand the season. Very important when we are planning. Okay. Then um, we'll stop with this and then take a break. So the thing is to dare to dream. Okay. Um, so now the, the, that and the next one might seem a little paradoxical. <laughs> right. Fourth one is dare to dream. Fifth one is be real realistic. So if if I 
you know, if I'm to be practical and realistic, can I actually dream? Right. So the thing is to uh, be creative and to really dream big with God. Okay. Um, and the Lord will enable us to do the daily, the monthly, or daily, the weekly, monthly, in order to, you know, reach that. Okay. Um, look at this verse, Ephesians 3. He is able to do. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. These are big words. These are like grand words or grand attributes. He is able, well able to do it. Uh, he has the ability, the capability, the resource, and everything. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Okay, so he's one step ahead of us. If you're asking, he's, he's able to do exceedingly. So that's his capability. That's a characteristic. But if you look at the, uh, you know, the other part of the verse, according to the power that works in us. Right. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that all that we personally, you know, sometimes limited by our skin or thinking, but it's according to the power that works in us. What is that power that works in us? Right. It is the Holy Spirit power, resurrection power that works in the believer. Right. So this is something which is uh, very, very profound that we understand that. So, so it is, you know, you see the vine and the branch, you see that. Well, I'm abiding in the vine. I'm receiving what the vine supplies um, to the branch, and I'm bearing fruit. Right. So, so I can, you know, here is this incentive, or here is this push to to really think beyond what I'm thinking, to to ask beyond what I'm asking, right? because it's according to His power. It's according to his power that works in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, and then verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. So it's everything is to glorify him, uh, to, to bring glory to his name, to be so that he is made big, he is magnified, and his purposes are fulfilled. Right? Okay, so we'll um, stop here and then uh, proceed after the break. Thank you.